Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I actually forgot all of my tripods, but I'm still going to try to fight through and film what I can. I wanted to do a video about the suppressor that I just got, which is the Griffin Optimus uh, multi-caliber suppressor. Uh, it's designed for 9mm, so you'll see it as the Optimus 9, but it can work on anything from a 17 HMR all the way up through a 300 uh, Winchester Magnum. So it's a great suppressor for somebody like myself who's just getting into the game. I don't know a lot about suppressors. I want to learn a little bit, and I'm not sure if this would be the only one that I'll get, but most likely not. I'll probably get another one in the future. So today my goal is to show you just how a suppressor, just how much this suppressor specifically, meters the noise. Now it's tough to do on camera because the microphones on the different cameras, they have a built-in leveler, right? So there's nothing that's going to go way too high. If it was, you blow your eardrums out every time you listen to it on your television, computer, your phone, whatever. So they have a metering built in. The only way I could think to get around that today is, I'm sure it's been done before, but I haven't seen any. I'm going to talk while I'm shooting. That way you can get an understanding of what my voice sounds like normally when I'm just talking with you and what my voice sounds like when the shot goes off. Now I'll do it both unsuppressed and suppressed and I'm going to do it in 22 long rifle on a pistol and on a rifle and then I'll do it in 9mm. I'll also do it in 223 and I'll also do it in 308 and for 308 I have a couple different loads but you'll see. So I guess I'll just shut up. I'll show you how to configure the Griffin Optimus 9 onto the different guns that you are going to put it on, at least how I was told by the company. So with that, I will jump right in. Let's do 22 on a pistol. Okay, so first first gun we're going to be using this on is the Smith & Wesson M&P 22 pistol. And this is the box, of course, that the Griffin comes in. When you open it up, it's got a few things inside. It has your can itself. The baffles are in here. You have your uh, longer piece to put onto rifles. You've, of course, got your Nielsen device, your pistol booster, a tool, another baffle for when you thread it onto the rifle calibers, and it comes with a 30 caliber muzzle device. This is the Griffin 5 8 by 24 and 762, of course, this 30 caliber. So if you run it on a 308 or an AR 10 or whatever it is, and then it comes with a different end cap. So right now, I have the 22 caliber end cap on. This is the 30 caliber end cap, or I guess it would be 9 millimeters, so it'd be 355 or 357 caliber. So, let's show you how to thread this on. To put it on the pistol, you actually just take the tube and the Nielsen device, and the Nielsen device just threads right in, just like this. And that's it. That's all you do. And then you take the threaded end and you put it on the threaded barrel. Now, this 22 pistol, as like most, is a fixed barrel system, so the barrel doesn't actually tilt. I contacted Griffin because I wasn't sure with the Nielsen device, sometimes that will cause malfunctions. And it says right in there, do not use the spring assembly on fixed barrels. So I contacted them and I said, hey, I have a fixed barrel 22 pistol and of course a fixed barrel 22 rifle. And they said, that's fine, you can use the spring assembly for that. So I reached out to them directly. They sent me that information back. For 22s today, we're gonna to be using standard velocity, and you'll see the difference of that out of the pistol versus out of the rifle. So let me go ahead and get eyes and ears on, and then we'll get started shooting. Okay, so different camera now. I apologize for the wind noise. Obviously nothing I can do about that. The reason I'm filming with a different camera now is because this one has a setting to where you pick up audio as if you're recording a speech. So I have the audio setting set to that on the camera right now. I have six rounds of standard velocity 22 long rifle in the magazine. I'm going to shoot three unsuppressed and then I'll screw the suppressor on and shoot three suppressed. So first things first, let's get our ears on because unsuppressed still is uncomfortably loud, especially out of the pistol. So I'm going to talk to you throughout this whole thing. I'm just going to keep talking so that way when I'm shooting you can hear exactly how much this changes the sound of my voice. Let's thread the suppressor on. Of course, we've got the safety on on the pistol, and I'm not putting anything in the way of the muzzle. I'm just screwing something else onto it. There we go. All threaded on. Now I'm going to shoot three suppressed, and you're going to hear exactly what this sounds like while I'm talking through shooting. You can get an idea as to just how quiet that thing is 
when put on a 22 pistol. So that is standard velocity stuff out of a 22 pistol with the Griffin Optimus 9. Let's get this changed out and let's jump up to the rifle and you'll hear the difference with the standard velocities. It gets a little more velocity out of the longer barrel, so it actually might go supersonic today. Let's take a look. Okay, so the wind is still with us, unfortunately. Now we've stepped up to 22 rifle. 16 inch barrel, Smith & Wesson M&P 1522 rifle. Um, six rounds of that same standard velocity. We're gonna shoot three unsuppressed, I'll keep talking throughout, and then we'll shoot three suppressed, and I'll keep talking, you'll be able to hear the difference. So, here are three unsuppressed shots. You get an idea of just how loud the rifle is, okay? So now, let's put the suppressor on. And it just threads on again. I'm using that Nielsen device, the spring booster assembly, uh, as per instructed to by Griffin. So for anybody who thinks I'm doing this wrong, I actually thought I was too, so, until I reached out to the company and they said, no, no, on 22 LR, you should be fine. It actually looks pretty damn good on this rifle here too. It does cause it to have a little more weight out front. Okay, three suppressed shots, and you can hear just how quiet this thing really is when it's suppressed. So there you go. There is the Griffin Armament Optimus 9 with a 22 caliber end cap on the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522 rifle. All right, let's keep the 22 end cap on and I'll show you how to configure it for a full rifle caliber. Let's move up to 223. Okay, so we just got done shooting the Griffin in 22. Now I'm gonna show you how to configure this for rifle configuration. First of all, you need to either have a direct mount system, a three lug system, or in this case, a taper mount system. So I've got the Griffin Optimus muzzle device. Okay, you can see here it's 5.56, so it's half by 28. That is the muzzle device that I actually choose to use on this rifle anyway. So all you're going to do is you're going to take this piece here, and this, as you can probably see, just threads right down on there just like that now if you wanted to run kind of like a uh, blast deflector or something like that you could just leave that on they actually sell a thread protector and they also make a mid-size one so it's about that long and you can just put the thread protector on and run that kind of as a blast shield and just leave it on the rifle all the time the next step is to take the Nielsen device back out and we're going to put this piece in you can just slide that right there for now, it's just sitting on top, and we'll have the suppressor eat that later. So there's a wrench in here included, which is this right here. And you'll notice there are teeth kind of around the, this Nielsen device here that that fits into. That is how you unscrew this. So let me go ahead and set the camera down and get this done. Okay, got the Nielsen device unscrewed. Doesn't take but a second, but it does take two hands. And you can kind of see maybe in here it's not that dirty, but we're just going to take this suppressor, slide it right down over the top of that, and we're going to screw it on. And we want to get it nice and tight. So you're going to want two hands, of course, snug everything down. And once everything gets snug down, it does look a bit long for that AR. You can use this on 5.56 barrels as short as 10 and a half inches. So if you wanted to run a 10 and a half inch barrel with a slightly longer handguard, like a 13 inch handguard, and then put the suppressor on it, then it would look a little more streamlined. In its full configuration like this, it's listed at nine and a half inches long, and you can run that mid-size one I was telling you about before, which is this piece right here, and it gets down to about seven and a half inches long. So let me go ahead and get everything tightened down, and we'll take three shots unsuppressed, three shots suppressed. All right, so we've got our AR-15 with just the Griffin muzzle device on here. And I considered running my hand loads um, as part of this testing through the rifle so you could, I could run them unsuppressed and suppressed. But then I thought that it wouldn't exactly give the best representation of the suppressor simply because I'm using an ammunition you can't buy off the shelf. So instead, I'm going to be using the green tip ammunition. That is just what I had laying around. I also had some Freedom 55 grain, but this stuff runs a little more reliably through this particular setup. So, I've got a H3 buffer in here and a full weight bolt carrier group, uh, and I'm running the 62 grain green tips. We're gonna shoot three 
unsuppressed and then we're going to put the can on and shoot three suppressed so let's go ahead and get that done three unsuppressed and then we'll do three suppressed and i'm going to keep talking the whole time so the whole time i'm shooting here you're going to understanding just how loud this damn thing is it is crazy loud i think i was throwing brass at the jeep there too so let's go ahead and put the can on and you'll get an understanding of just how much this thing quiets it down. Also, you'll notice, of course, with those shots, you probably saw a lot of flash. This muzzle device is not a flash hider in the least. This is definitely a, uh, a muzzle brake for sure. So, all right, let's go ahead and shoot three shots suppressed, and I'll keep talking to you on the course so you can get an understanding of just how loud this thing is. There you go. That's an understanding of just how loud this thing is. Is it hearing safe? No, it's not hearing safe. Not on 223. On the 22, even through the pistol with the rifle, yes, of course it's hearing safe. On a full caliber like this, a full rifle caliber, it's not. You still need ears for it. You're still going to get that supersonic crack, which is incredibly uncomfortable to the ears, and you're also still going to get some sound. Um, being a semi-auto like this, you're going to have a lot of noise actually coming back through the bolt carrier group. So. That was 223. Let's step it up now to 308, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so we're going to stick with the rifle configuration of this can, and we're going to put it on the Ruger American Chambered in 308. Now, we do need to make one modification before we start shooting from 223 to 308. What do you think that is? There's a 308 hole. It's a 223 hole. We need to put the 30 caliber end cap on this here. Now you'll notice there are what looks like spots for a wrench in there. That's because the wrench is included. Here's Remember that Nielsen device? You unscrew the top portion from the bottom portion. You do this here. And it comes out a little easier with two hands than it does with one hand. There. Now that it's out, You'll notice how that looks eerily similar to that. So you actually use this device to unscrew that. And you can take this apart further, pop off the threaded part, slide that spring out. And that way, if you needed to get leverage, they actually show you just putting a screwdriver or flathead screwdriver through there. And you can use that as leverage to unscrew this. So I'm going to unscrew this end cap and screw that end cap on, and we'll be ready for 308 configuration. Okay, now we've got the 308. Ruger American. It's got the Griffin Armament muzzle device on here. Stop looking at my face. There we go. Griffin Armament muzzle device in 30 caliber. And I'm going to be using 147 grain 762 by 51 NATO rounds. We're only going to do two shots uh, unsuppressed and then two shots suppressed this time. The reason for that, four round magazine. I just don't feel like having to reload is really what it boils down to. So, go ahead and get this thing loaded up. Two rounds unsuppressed, two rounds suppressed. And again, I'm gonna be talking throughout the whole thing so you can get an idea as to what this thing sounds like. There's unsuppressed, pretty stinking loud. Let's screw the can on. Now, the only thing I did different with this is I put the 30 caliber end cap on. Beyond that, it's in the exact same configuration as it was for 223. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna do suppress so you can get an idea just how quiet this thing is. Again, you're still getting that supersonic crack, but what you're not getting is you're not getting that loud muzzle blast noise. So there you go. The Griffin Armament Optimus 9 on a bolt action 308. Now, I've got another treat for you. Let's leave this thing on here and let's move. I'm not going to take it back off and do an unsuppressed and a suppressed. I'm going to do just suppressed with another type of ammunition I have. Okay, it's windy again. So I have subsonics. These are Seller and Bellet 200 grain subsonic rounds. Now, of course, it being subsonic, you're not going to get that same crack because it's a supersonic crack. Well, if these are subsonic, you're not going to get that. So I'm just going to go ahead and shut up, and you're going to get an understanding as to just how quiet these things are when you shoot them. And also, not just how quiet they are, but how little it kicks when you shoot. So you, you can see they are quiet. I mean quiet enough here. 
I'll prove it to you just how quiet they are. Now, I would not be doing this with any other 308 ammunition. I know it's subsonic stuff, and I know that it's quiet. I'm about to shoot a bolt action 308 without ears. So let me show you what that is. What it is, is it's basically a pellet gun. It's basically a loud pellet gun with that subsonic ammunition. This can also be used on 300 blackout. Use it on 300 blackout, subsonic ammunition, you're gonna get about the same. Now, of course, it being, if you use it on a semi-automatic action, you're gonna get a little bit more noise simply because it's gonna come back through the bolt carrier group and all that kind of stuff. But on a bolt action with subsonic ammunition, it is absolutely quiet. The one challenge you're gonna face with subsonic ammo is that you're gonna get about 12 inches, I experience, out of this 18 inch barrel with the suppressor, 12 inches of drop at 50 yards versus the 147 grain stuff. So just understand that if you're gonna go hunting with this, which I think is a fantastic option, 200 grains uh, hitting a, a small game animal, and by small I mean like white-tailed deer or smaller, white-tailed deer or smaller is still gonna put that animal down. So you could absolutely hunt with subsonic ammunition if you're in an area where you're not gonna be taking a crazy long shot. If you're 100 yards or less, I think it's perfect for you. So, the last thing that we have to test is nine millimeters. So let's go ahead, shut the camera off, get this thing switched back out to its pistol configuration. The only thing I'm gonna do differently on from what it is looks like now is I'm gonna take off the rifle attachment, I'm gonna put the Nielsen device back on, and I'm gonna leave that 30 caliber end cap on, and we are gonna shoot some subsonic nine millimeter through it. Let's take a look. Okay, now we're into nine millimeters. So I've got a few different brands of ammunition. They're all 147 grain which theoretically should be subsonics. Of course, I'm gonna run it unsuppressed first and then I'll run suppressed. The first ones I'm starting with are uh, Spear Lawman 147 grain uh, full metal jacket. So unsuppressed out of a Smith & Wesson M&P 9. This is the only one I have with a threaded barrel currently. So we're gonna run, let's get an idea for that. So this is the action. This is me talking with the action going. So you can get an idea just how loud the action itself is. It's a completely unloaded gun. Now, we're gonna shoot three unsuppressed. I'll screw the suppressor on and we'll go three suppressed. Here we go. All right, we're gonna go three shots here. We're gonna go unsuppressed. One. Now you can get an idea just how loud that thing is. Let's go ahead and screw the suppressor on and we'll get an idea as to how loud it is when these rounds are suppressed. Now again, these rounds being 147 grain, they should be subsonic, and that means we should not get a supersonic crack out of it. So let's see if that is actually the case here. As you can see, one, two, and three. I can tell you that my electronic ears still kicked in and cut off some of that noise. So it's still louder than what I would like. But you get an idea just how quiet it makes this gun. Is it Hollywood quiet? No, it's not Hollywood quiet. So let's go ahead and try some different ammunition through this thing. I've got Winchesters, I've got Federals, and I've even got some PPUs. So I'm gonna go ahead and load two of each in here, and then we're gonna go ahead and give all eight of those a shot. And we're gonna see if we can tell any difference between them. Okay, I can already hear you. I can hear your comments already. What about first round pop? So. Uh, first round pop was explained the way I understood it is right now the can is full of air just ambient air which is nitrogen oxygen and some other stuff well oxygen is flammable uh, it was actually demolition ranch that talked about this but basically what happens is when you fire the first shot through it that air is what's taking up the baffles as opposed to those gases so that oxygen that's in there burns which is why you get a first round pop is that accurate or not I don't know, but that's the way I understand it. So I have an extra round loaded, so we're not gonna get that first round pop. So disregard the first one, but then we're gonna go in alphabetical order. There are two 147 grain Federal rounds. There are two 147 grain Spear Lawman rounds, so I guess it's not quite. There are two PPU rounds, which are 158 grain, and then there are two Winchester 147 grain rounds. So there are eight, nine rounds in this magazine. The first one is just for first round pop. So let's go ahead, load this thing up, and let's get an idea just what it sounds like suppressed. So again, first round pop. 
Now we're going to go two of the Federals. And then we're going to go two of the Spears. Now we're going to go two of the uh, PPU ammunition, which is that. And then we're going to go Winchesters, which is that. What you can probably sense or hear is that the rounds hitting the vehicle that the camera's on might actually be louder than the shot itself. Kind of interesting. I'll have to listen to the audio myself and, and hear it, but from my, my point of view, my ears cut off when the shot goes off, but then I can hear the round hit the vehicle, the empty casing hit the vehicle. So it, uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly how this all plays out. But again, I wanted to give you an understanding as to just how much a suppressor, in this case the Griffin Optimus 9, suppresses or silences the shot coming out of different calibers and different setups. Uh, it doesn't make it Hollywood quiet. It absolutely does not. But it does make it hearing safe some of the times. If you're using subsonic ammunition, theoretically, it should make it hearing safe. I do not like shooting the 9mm with this can anyway without my ears. It's still just this left one. It gives it just this, I don't know, a little bit of a twang, I guess is the best way I can put it. And I, I'm, I don't like that. But the 308 shooting unsuppressed, the 22 shooting unsuppressed, shooting suppressed the 308 and the 22s I can shoot those without ears and I'm perfectly fine but uh, for whatever reason the 9 I'm just not a big fan of even subsonics shooting them uh, without ears on now I may eventually in the future tailor a hand load to make it worth it but in any case I wanted to give you guys an understanding as to what a suppressor actually does Thank you all very much for watching stick around I'm actually going to be doing some more testing with this thing in terms of temperatures and how the same number of rounds for different calibers affect the outer temperature of this thing and then also what the suppressor covers do and different things like that. So stick around. More stuff to come on the channel and uh, if you like what you see, of course, give that thumbs up button. I don't mind that at all. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll talk to you all again very soon.